good morning. How's it going? How are you? says. Great. How's your best Scouse accent? Mm, yeah, I'm really on the spot, but we keep it in mind, and then you're just going to hear it. It's just going to sink okay, in, like, go, but so not I, on the spot, but like, I'll be answering a question, and then I'll just... Uh, just slip out. So if I start talking in a Scouse accent... I'm not going to mimic like, you. It, no, 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 but it, will that help influence it? No, I'm influenced. Oh, okay. I just, like, on the spot, I feel pressure, uh -huh. but then I'll be talking. Yeah, talk. yeah so uh, I was asked, I was on the phone, and I was in the airport in Atlanta, and they were like, what, what's Ric Flair's catchphrase? What does he always say? And I was like, I'm not going to say it. I'm in the airport, and now I'm on the spot. Also, people, like, I'm going to draw attention to myself, <laughs> and then... So I just kept talking and talking and then finally let out a big woo! And it did exactly what I thought it would do, which is it always gets a response. And I think that's the first time it hasn't. It was an incredibly delayed one if there was yeah. one. <laughs> we, there we, we are go. all just waking up here. It's okay, I understand. There we go. So what's it like being around this sort of environment, especially with a ton of the guys and girls that you've known in the past? Is it like really special when you come to these sorts of things to catch up with people? I have loved doing these Comic Cons. Um, when I was wrestling full time, you guys got to see me through a screen. I was in your living room every week, but it, it's a bit of a, a not a personal connection because we're, we're protected. We're always in an uh, arena, hotel, uh, airport, and there's not a lot of, um, other than the crowd response, we don't get a chance to to meet and make eye contact with the fans. And if we do, when we're doing autograph sessions in the WWE, there's like three security on either side and they're pushing you through the second you don't get to ask a question or say anything. So now getting to do these and getting to chat with the people who I was able to influence and also listen to them tell the stories about what my matches and stuff meant to them uh it's it's really great i have a really good time doing them and of course your signing station is of course right next to christian and the, the history you guys have in the first two tlc matches of course at SummerSlam and at wrestlemania x7 how important to you was it for you to be a part of those matches yeah you know so i as much as i as fully could not support the women's revolution more than I do, and I love seeing what they do. My career was really based on my interaction with the guys and the TLC matches and working with Edge and, and um, you know, so that's when they go, what's your WrestleMania moment? I think of stuff like that. I think of uh, the match in Houston, the TLC match. I think of Edge versus McFoley, where I lit the table on fire and things like that. And, and so it, it's really good to catch up with these guys that I've known for so long, too. So, you, of course, it was uh, at TLCs. They were monumental moments. But one of the other biggest monumental moments of your career was when you and Trish became the first women to main event Raw. Um, what did that? Yeah, yeah. Let hold on. We're go, we're gonna do it over again. Pose the question and then give a pause and then we'll we'll all participate. Yeah. Okay. So, you uh -huh. and Trish Stratus mm -hmm. became the first women in history to main event Raw. That's much better. <laughs> How did it feel when you were told that you guys were going on last? So just to clarify, and I know, you know, WWE likes to put these titles on things, and if you make it, it small enough, you can always be like, the first person in a black and white jacket in Liverpool ever to interview Lita, right? It's like, <laughs> it's this guy right here. Give it up. Oh, but before that, I was in the main event, with Stephanie, but they, they kind of, the reason that they don't consider that the first ever is because we had all the bells and whistles. We had The Rock as the special guest referee, Hunter, Kurt Angle, the Hardy Boys, you know, so it was really a, a free for all down there, even though the match was just me and Stephanie, whereas the main event with me and Trish, it was just me and Trish, you know, nothing else. Um, going back to how that felt, Little did we know that however many years later we would still be talking about that match and really have it being one of the defining rungs of the ladder of the, the evolution for women. We had no idea. 
What I really liked about that, looking back, is as excited and flattered and everything as we were, it, it was almost kind of like a, yeah, you're damn right we're in the main event. You know, like, like we knew we could pull that spot off. We knew we could deliver. And to get that nod from the office of like, yes, we, we also know you can deliver. That, that was, um, it was rad. It, it was cool. So being a part of that match and, of course, at WrestleMania this year, we had the first ever women's main event of WrestleMania between Ronda Rousey, Charlotte Fleur, and Becky Lynch. How did it feel? How did it feel watching that match, having known that maybe it started from that main event of Raw? Yeah, I, I mean, even when there was the rumblings early on that they were maybe going to let the women let, maybe that the women were going to close out the show. Um, you know, it didn't seem real, and I, and I was excited about it, but I do remember watching it and feeling that, I mean, seeing that, um, the helicopter scene of Charlotte flying in and just going, um, this match has, and what I love about that, and what I loved about being in the TLC matches is I was like, this has nothing to do with gender. This is just a huge match, period. You know, and it's like, if you can, and I, and that's what I really love seeing. It's not like, it's not in parentheses or it's not an asterisk like for a girl. It's like, that's a great match or Becky Lynch is my favorite wrestler. It's not like, well, of the females, it's just like, who do I love watching on my screen? These, you know, some of them are male and some of them are female, but I'll just name my top five, you know? And, and I, that's what I really love about seeing that is, um, you know, just a, a, a non-binary, you know, showing of what's on your TV. It's not like, oh, well, we have to have a women's match. We have to have that. It's like, no, we need the people that are killing it to get on the show, and that happens to be a lot of women as well. Absolutely. Um, and, of course, we've seen the division grow, and now there's the tag division as well. Interesting question. If you were still active in the ring and you were vying for those tag belts, who out of the modern era would you want as a tag partner? What I want as my tag partner of the modern era, if I could still go. That question would s kind of allude to the fact that I couldn't still I'm go. Not saying and that, that I not wouldn't be if up for ever... being a tag team champion with, oh, I don't know, maybe my bestie Trish Stratus? I, w I, would th I would think that we could take on any, any tag team that they could throw out, um, and, and I, I would love to do that. I think that would be fun. And of course, you guys tag teamed at Evolution as well. Like, being a part of that, that must have been incredible as well. So I loved being part of Evolution, and what I also loved about it is, first of all, they called me with some heads up so I could actually train um, and get ready, ready to be in the ring. And number two, I loved, you know, our match, it, it, was, it was no pressure. It was like a fun opener, you know, it was with Mickey and Alicia Fox. Like, it wasn't like this big prove yourself and really, you know, go toe to toe with these like hottest people of the current roster. It was just like, we're just gonna go out there and have a fun match, you know? So I can't say there was a lot of pressure and the crowd was super hot and we were on first and then I got to go, well, that was fun. And now I wanna sit and watch what the these current women are doing and I get to watch the show um, and I just happened to uh, have uh, opened it as well and that was kind of how I approached it. I, I didn't feel super nervous. I just went out there and had fun and that's, that's the best part of being able to, when you can get in that pocket, because sometimes it's not. Sometimes you feel the pressure. Sometimes you feel not ready or you're nervous about a certain spot. Um, we just went out and had fun. The crowd had fun, and then we got to watch the rest of the show. It, it, what was your favorite match from that card, apart from your own? Oh, my God. Uh, the, the Iron Woman match. I mean, I, I watched that whole match from the crowd, and, and I love doing that. I've watched so many matches. Um, there's, a, there's a thing backstage at WWE where it's almost like you're 
supposed to watch the monitor. And sometimes it's loud or you can't hear and it's almost like it's class, right? It's like roll call. It's like, oh, I don't see, you know, is this is like a way to get heat, like so-and-so's not watching the show. But I would always go duck out and get into the crowd because that's where that's where you can feel the match. And, and as we all know, it's fun to watch wrestling on TV, but it, it's it's totally different being there, right? And that's how wrestling is best enjoyed, is like that full sensory, you can feel, you can interact with the crowd, and you're giving that instant feedback. So I, I watched that match from, from in the crowd. If you see someone that looks like me that kind of has a, a hoodie on, it, it is. I'm watching the match from the crowd, and um, I love doing that. So we've had a lot of Vince McMahon stories this weekend. But what I want to know is, what's your favorite Stephanie McMahon story? Hmm. Little no secret, Stephanie for a while was on the writing team and she is solely responsible for Kane being my ex-husband. <laughs> And she came up, I remember she told me the, where, the story of where this was going to go and my love child and Gene Schnitzky and it wasn't his fault in the boiler room and, and I have to protect my boyfriend and he can't fight my husband because we're on a show about fighting so I have to protect, like, and I was like looking around um, for the cameras or like waiting to laugh and then she's just like, and I was like, well, another day at the office, here we go. Um, in it, it was, it was like, I, it's always you look at things after with, with different memories. Looking back, it's hilarious, and I love talking about that story. In it, I was like, oh my God, I'm supposed to be the baby face, I'm pregnant with the spawn, and I hate him, but I love the seed inside me, but then it's gonna get squashed by genes. Like, I was just like, what is happening here? Um, but come on, only in the WWE, right? It was, it's hilarious and it, it was great. And I, um, now I can fully appreciate it. So there's a, a lovely bit of bling on that finger that is blinding me every time it hits the light. Only and it's not. They have to make sure they're cheap enough so that the wrestlers don't sell them on <laughs> eBay if they get hard up. <laughs> but what was it like when you got the call to tell you you were being inducted? So... Our circus life, it, there's no off seasons. You are all in if you're gonna be successful. So when I retired in, at the end of 06, I, I needed to take a step back. And you know, and a lot of people, so I broke my neck in 2002. A lot of people think that I retired because I broke my neck. And um, when I retired, I actually felt really good or really healthy and I was, but I was just like, I've kind of done it. You know, at this point, I'm just repeating things and that's, I didn't get into things to just kind of be in a wheel. I, I wanted to smash barriers and do all this stuff and I did. But doing that, it takes all of your focus, all your concentration. I missed most of my friends getting married and having children and, and you know, a lot of family stuff. So I, I, it was just time. It was time for me to, to back off. And in doing that, you kind of have to figure out where your daily, your new daily life lies. And I did, and, and I was spending a bunch of time down in South, Central America, and I was surfing, and I, I mean, I was not being Lita. I was just, you know, on this new adventure. And so the, the office is very, um, if they text you or call you, like five minutes is, is four and a half minutes too long to, to respond. They're just used to everything happening right then and there. And so when, I, when I'm down there, I would, you know, set my phone. I would, wouldn't take it with me. I would I'd be out in the water. I'm surfing. I'm, I'm, you know, walking around doing whatever. And so I got home and I saw, I saw there was a message from um, WWE. It was later, I was like, okay, well, whatever, I'm, I'll, I'll deal with it later. Then Stephanie called and she's like, the office has been trying to get in touch with you. I'm like, for 12 whole hours. And um, so they told me and it was cool, but it, it was, I was like, oh, I wasn't thinking. I wonder who's going to be inducted this year. I want, this is about the time they start to release the names, right? Like it, it wasn't on my radar. Um, 
And so it was more just like, oh, it was like an Easter egg, right? Like I w wasn't expecting it, I wasn't thinking about it. And um, the, whole, the whole week, it was awesome. Like I just it was able to enjoy myself. There's no stress, I'd already done the work. This was just about coming and saying thank you and being like, wow, I, I, I did some cool stuff. You don't get to even think about that because you've got the show the next morning or you've got to get to bed because you have early media or something like that. So I hadn't really reflected on my career until then. And so it was, um, it was, it was, it meant more than I thought it did when I got the call. Because when I got the call, I was like, yeah, that's cool. There's a swell coming in. I got to run out and go surf, you know? And then, but after, when, by the time I got there, I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. Okay, all right. Like, you're, don't be too cool. Like, this is really great. Enjoy it and, and soak it up. And I did. Um, and after that, of course, uh, at WrestleMania 32, you got to unveil the new women's belt. How, what did that feel like because of the revert into the, the Divas belt and then going back to the women's belt? Did that feel like, a, like a, almost like a leap forward that they'd got rid of the Divas moniker? Again, I think that was just another a rung on, on the ladder of the evolution because the women had already been kicking ass. They had already been starting to get a little more time on the show um, and that was just like a, a symbol. I remember when I retired, I, I took a kind of a hiatus from watching and clicked back on and I was like, what? Why is the belt pink? I don't understand what's happening here, you know? And so I kind of was checked out during that time. And then when I saw the belt combined with how little time the women were getting on the show, it, it was nice to be like, all right, like next chapter, that, that was... We're, we are officially putting the pink belt chapter to bed with this new title. And so to be able to be the one to, to do that at that time, I was uh, full-time producing all of those women. So it, it was really nice to um, be like, all right, I got you girls. Let's take this title and um, give it the respect that it deserves. And I know they can and they have and they do and they'll continue to, you know. And you say you're full-time producing these women and, of course, you were commentating on the Mae Young Classic. Which of those competitors in the Mae Young Classic, pick three, that are going to be the next Becky Lynch? Wow. Um, so I really loved, it's talked about a lot, um, Tessa Blanchard was in the first round with, with Cuddy with Sane, right, I think? Um, yeah. And so, and I know what that match was meant to do. It was meant to go, wait, both of these women should be towards the end, and one of them isn't, like, to really keep you glued on that first round. But it was a bummer to not see Tessa move forward. I think she's a huge star, and I'm really happy to see her. I think she took a little bit of a hit there, going, man, why did they eliminate me in round one? Did I not, and you, you have to. Like, sure, there's, we have writers, it's a television show, but these things still mess with your head, and, and um, I think it was nice to see her kind of maybe take a moment, regroup, and WWE is not the only way to, to pursue your passion and to make, make a living and doing what you love. And I, and I love to see her coming into her own and, and uh, figuring herself out there. She's, she's a star, for sure. So let's take your opinions on perhaps someone like Tony Storm, who mm -hmm. came over, moved, uprooted her life, moved over here, made a massive name for herself and is now killing it as uh, NXT UK Women's Champion. So a lot of those women, we, we didn't know a ton before the, the classic. And so we, we had these interviews with them um, to just kind of get to know them on a personal level. Sure, I can see the moves and say what they are, but that doesn't you know connect me to that person. And I had seen her stuff, but hadn't talked to her until, until then. And what I loved about her is she, re she reminded me of me in this way that when I went down to Mexico and I was, you know, kind of carving my path, I always joke that there was like pianos falling behind my head and like robbers like going to pull money out of my pocket and then tripping on the sidewalk and I'm just like skipping being like, I'm going to be a wrestler. I'm down here in Mexico City, you know, just like kid power, right? And so she, she kind of has this where she was just like, oh, I was in Japan, and then I did this, and then I did that, you know? And I'm like, do you know how badass you are? And she's just like, oh, well, 
I don't know, like whatever. You know, she's just like, she doesn't even know that she can't be stopped, right? Like it's, it's that, that was really, I, I loved, I love seeing that energy and, and it's just like, you don't even know how rad you are. So one, uh, one final question. If, um, if Vince was to turn around to you and say, okay, you're allowed to have one final match in WWE, but it can be whatever you want, what would you pick? I'd say I'd say a four corners match I don't want the title involved I just want it for the match it's just one match I don't and of course I, I would like to go in thinking I'm going to win and if I do and there's a title involved that means I have to have other last matches so four corners match nothing on the line except the love of wrestling with me, Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch, and Trish Stratus. Now that's one hell of a match right there. Ladies and gentlemen, please raise the roof one more time for Hall of